Well, we're walking outside this morning. It's time to do our milking of Roxy. We're going to milk Roxy. Hey, sissy. Good morning, sweetie. We're not gonna milk you, sissy, relax. We're gonna walk over and milk Roxy. And then at some point we will take her babies off of her and move them inside the house. Look at here. That's a great sign, isn't it? Is that just a wonderful sign right there? I think that Jamie and I are doing the right thing. The way that we're working. Oh boy, you had a tumble and a fall. Oh Humpty Dumpty. Where's my tater chips at? Where's my tater chips? Yeah, so it, you guys know that we named one chocolate chip, the other is Chips Ahoy. But the collective group, my tater chips. They're my tater chips. So I'm going to uh, milk Roxy. And then uh, after I'm done with that, I will move the milk from this cup into a bottle. I will take these babies inside the house into our nursery. Uh-oh, what's she doing? See, she wants them to get up and eat. She's hurting. She's like, uh, relieve me. Rel All right, I will take all of this delicious goat milk inside and we will put it into a bottle. And then I'll be grabbing these babies. I'll come back, grab the babies and bring them with me. Excuse me, sir. All right, so we're gonna do a direct transfer from the cup to the baba. So I'm looking for some little goats. Hello, little goats. Little goats, where are you? Guys, I can't find the little goats anywhere. Who thinks they know where the little goats are at? I know they're in here. I know they're in here somewhere. Here we go. Oh my goodness, Hello. Hi to hello one back there. Hi to hello. <laughs> behind the toilet oh goodness gracious they ate and they're doing fine now friends we actually did the bottle feeding on a live video one of my sounds of silence that uh, a lot of people are absolutely hating well you know what you get mad when I talk you get mad when I don't but uh, hey Sounds of silence. Those are not going to go away. You can watch them if you want, or you don't have to if you don't want to. But the goats are fine, and they're doing wonderful. And we're so, so in love with them. And don't worry, we have a lot of great helpers here who love to help with the babies. Whenever we need help, we can just call on anybody, especially Stella. She's always been the best. Now, I don't know where the other helpers are at. Trixie, you're not a very good helper. Fiona, she only helps at night. Christmas is, she's a pretty good helper. She takes care of all of our medical needs. Are there any more helpers around here? Any more helpers? Who's in here? Who's on the floor? Oh, what well, yeah. Well, there's a wonderful helper right there. You're a, being, you're a good helper too, Mabel. You're a good helper. Okay, y'all leave Mabel. Wait, Mabel's trying to sleep. Mabel is trying to sleep. Sorry, Mabel, we messed you up. Did she leave you, sweetie? She left you? Mabel, get back over here. 
Oh, Lord. Where are you going? You going out there with me? <laughs> Tracy's like, uh uh. The couch is mine. The couch is all mine. Well, we're standing here at the JL Ranch property. I am staring across the pasture at all of our ladies who are laid up in the tree line, the shade over there along the far tree line. And uh, we're gonna have a quick peek at our feed buggy. Uh, I did get a call from Richardson saying their feed truck is coming back in. If I wanna bring my feed buggy by, they can refill it. It'll be a lot easier using the boom on that feed truck than to have to use the bags like we normally do. We're gonna climb up top and have a peek inside this thing. But I will say as of right now from walking around it, I think that we're still good on feed. Now, I don't want to miss out on getting grain if we need it, but uh, we're looking pretty good over here. I do feel bad for Jacob, uh, my shirtless Jake. He, he doesn't listen to me. Guys, I'm just gonna say it and there's nothing different about Jake and compared to Ellie and any other kid. <laughs> Uh, that age group, they don't listen. You can talk to them till you're blue in the face and they don't listen. So the rule of thumb is one day on, two days off. I will say that again, one day on and two days off. Now, you could either take the buggy out of the pasture or you can close the doors on the buggy but you need one day on your feed buggy and that will give them the vitamins, the minerals, the nutrients, the dewormers, all that they need, the minerals. And then you turn it off, you shut it off, you close the doors or you pull the feed buggy away and you force your animals to get back out there and graze. What they need in their belly is stuff they, they call it something, roughage. It's called roughage. Roughage is a mixture of the plants, the, you know, the things they graze and forage on. That's called roughage, and roughage is a huge part of their diet. Now, yes, there is something called a salt limiter where they should not be allowed to stand here and just eat and eat and eat till it's gone. I don't know why the salt limiter is not working on Jake's cows. <laughs> I don't know. But uh, what Jake's going to have to do is what we do and you can open those doors up allow the cows to come up and eat they'll fill their bellies they may come up and eat two or three times during that same 24-hour period it doesn't matter to me but then you close the doors and the smaller cows will come up and finish up whatever they can grab out of the little the little pocket right there but the larger cows it's not enough for them and they's like oh okay well the feed buggy's closed i'll just have to find something else to eat and that's when they go to pasture. You have to keep them in that routine of knowing that this is their main source of food over here. And as long as it's a uh, good weather and we have nice green grass, that's the most nutritious thing they're ever gonna get in their bellies right over there. However, this requires work. This requires sloth. There's no work involved in that whatsoever. And so I believe what's going on with Jake's cows, the same problem we had with our bulls not too long ago. They get lazy. They get lazy. Like, why should I have to go off and eat if there's food right here? Why should I go out in the sun and graze? Why should I walk out there in, in the heat or the cold or the rain or the whatever? I'll just stand right here and eat until I'm full. And then I'll keep standing here and I'll eat again a couple of hours later. Then I'll keep standing here and eat again tonight. And that is the no-no. That's what Jake has to do. Put those doors back on there, Jacob. And once your cows have eaten for 24 hours, then you close those doors. You close them doors down. Just close them down and uh, force your cows to get off and graze. So what we're gonna do now is remove the lid or slide it back out of the way and see how we're looking on our grain. So. I need to get in there and churn. I'm gonna go ahead and get in there and turn that around a little bit and let some of this over here fall. I might can do it by hand. Yeah, there we go. So 
So for anyone who's been wondering, doesn't it get moldy and mucky? No, it doesn't. I do think that the feed buggy out in the pasture, Rita, settle down, might be a little bit hotter. And I bet you this, this aluminum here probably does have, grab some heat, but the feed st does stay dry. There's, it's not sweaty inside here. There's no moisture whatsoever. And so all the feed is nice and dry. So I will just say this, as far as refilling our feed buggy, does it need to be filled now? No. Could it go another week? Maybe two? Absolutely. Will I take it in just to make uh, my life a little bit easier and their life a little bit easier? Probably so. All right, so what I noticed first thing is that the cows have not touched their protein lick. They've not even touched it. No, they've turned it all around. I have found it all over the pasture flipped upside down, but they're not eating it. They have eaten a lot of their deworming block. Now, don't forget the deworming block stays in the cardboard and they have been playing around with it. They've broken it into little pieces, but they are eating on it. And that's very important. Uh, Waylon's having him a little lunch right now. You see, I mowed the pastures yesterday. Hey, bud, I'm not messing with you, okay? But uh, we're gonna see how much grain they have left in theirs. The reason that Richardson would like me to come in when the truck is there, it's a lot easier for them to go straight from that truck into the feed buggy, the grain buggy. See how easy it's spinning? So I know for sure this thing is almost empty. There's probably very little grain in here. Uh, can I do this with one hand? Can I climb up with one hand, do you think, Waylon? I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to climb up with one hand. Guys, if I fall, if I fall by trying to show off, then shame on me. <clears throat> I did it. All right, boy, it is hot out here. So I'm gonna remove the lid on this thing, slide it out of the way, and we're gonna see. Oh boy. All right, so looky here. So yes, the bulls have eaten quite a bit more than our, than our females have. And so I will absolutely take this in tomorrow and have it refilled. Um, I might can go drop this thing off right now so it'll be there for them tomorrow when they're ready for it. Ah, uh, okay, well, there you have it. And this is the difference in uh, when they overeat from the feed train, the feed buggy, compared to those who do it right. And I will say I was guilty that when I first dropped this thing off in here, I felt bad for them for being apart from the ladies that I left it open for more days than what I should have. And what they did was come by and, well, like I, you already know the video, you saw them yourself. They would hang out there in the shade all day, make a short walk over. You can actually see the trail where they've walked. They make a short walk over, eat, and walk back to the shade. A little bit later, they'd walk back over, eat, back to the shade. And they would do that throughout the entire day. And I did not see them for, the, for a while anywhere I heard in the pasture. They were not grazing at all. So when I had to come out and finally close the doors, that's when I finally saw the bulls starting to move around more and do, you know, do their, well, their grazing, which gives them the roughage that they need. All right, well, thank you all for being a part of this little video. We were, we were going to take, I got my truck here now. I'll go ahead and take and hook this thing onto it and we will drive it over to Richland and drop it off. And so tomorrow when that feed buggy comes, their, their, their big feed truck, they can go straight from the truck, swing over that boom and fill this thing and top it off for us. Let your troubles fester. Come watch Longhorn Lester. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Well, what, why is it all crooked like that?